so full of joy. Why are they so happy? What's going on? Kind of like they're jealous, huh? So, um, it says, verse 3 says, yes, the Lord has done amazing things for us. What joy. So, if we serve the Lord, the Lord does amazing things for us, right? So, that joy. Yes. He does amazing things for us. So, that joy that's in us, you know, our family see it, our friends, our co-workers. So, don't give up. You know, that joy is still there. <clears throat> Verse 4 says, Restore our fortunes, Lord, as streams renew the desert. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous and the just. Amen. Come on, come on. The wealth has been in the, the enemy's hands for a long time, and it's time for that, that wealth transfer to God's people. Come so on, we can use it. Right? <laughs> Verse 5 says, Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. Um, Verse 6 says, they weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return with the harvest. In other words, it's not over until God says it's over. Amen? Yes. It's not over. It's okay to cry. You know, it's okay because there's all kinds of things going on in our world, right? It's sad what's going on in our world, but you know what? God says he'll take those tears and he'll turn them into joy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Pray that that joy come. come. Remember, I don't like to party by myself, so you guys, there's room up here to, to get down, all right? <laughs> get out your seats, get up, clap, dance, two step, whatever. <laughs> Go ahead, turn it up. Baby. The joy of the Lord is all of my strength. I didn't up above from the one that was sent. I didn't always have this joy in my life. But I got to fight, fighting the to fight. Yes, I fought, I fought and I fought. And I'm still fighting to this day because I need to keep my sanity. I've been fighting for a very long time. And if I quit now, then I'm going to lose my mind. I want to thank my Heavenly Father for bringing me this far without a bother. I really do enjoy giving Jesus all the praises. When I think I don't know how I used to think it was a phase. It was the Holy Spirit speaking to me, telling me the joy of the Lord was all of my strength. Come on, guys, stand up. The joy of the Lord is in me. For Jesus has set me free. The greater is he that is in me. The joy of the Lord is in me. For Jesus has set me free. He's given me power to defeat the enemy. The joy of the Lord was evident to me. All I had to do was open my eyes and see that God was there for me in the beginning already. But I took it upon myself and I did it the hard way. I got led astray without any delay. The Lord said, hey, come on back my way. Anger, frustration, aggravation has to in my mind. I see things I thought I would never see in this time. The kind of things that made me think it was a sign to get on track with the Lord because he's coming back. Ain't no hope for compromising within. There ain't no time to be sinning. It was time to quit playing and repent. The joy of the Lord was all of my strength. The joy of the Lord is in me. 
that I'm asking for the parable that Jesus spoke in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 24 through 30. And I want you to open your heart today. And I tell this from if you're taking notes, are we a wheat or are we a tear? The book of Matthew 13, these are the words of Jesus in this parable for the wheat and the tares that it reads like this. Another parable put he forth into them saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man with so good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came in and sowed terrors among the wheat, and he went his way. But when the Bible, when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then there appeared terrors also. So the servants of the household who came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? For whence then has it terrors? He said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, or no, least while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together into the harvest, and in the end time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather you together first the tares, bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. I just want to pray. Father, we come before you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, we ask you, Lord God, today, God, as I decrease, I pray that you increase, that you may be glorified, God. I pray for every life, God, 
that we are God, that no one will walk out with the same people they came in, God. Father, we pray for salvation today, God. I pray that we examine our lives today, Lord God. And I pray that you will be glorified, God. Father, brace your people, strengthen your people. And Father, this morning, save souls, Lord God. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. And everybody believing God in the name of Jesus, saying amen and amen today. Amen. 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 You know, I want to minister to some of the time they taking notes today. And that is, amen, are we a wheat or are we a tear? Now, I want you to think about this parable. This parable is a powerful parable, and it's found in the book of Matthew. And it's the only parable that's not found in Mark and John and Luke. It is only found in Matthew. And this parable of the wheat and tares is very important for our lives. The parables of Jesus, and I want you to think about that, make up one-third of everything that is recorded in the gospel. So the parables are very important. One third of the gospel is literally Jesus designated that Jesus spoke through parables from one third of all these things through parables. And I want you to think about what I'm talking about because I want to look at the parable of the wheat and the tares. And it's about God's judgment. It's about God's righteousness. It shows how evil and good exists inside of the world. But that one day that God is going to separate everything. One day God is going to separate everything. And when he separates everything, you have to ask yourself... There's no middle ground at all. You are either a wheat or you are a tear. Now, I want you to think about what does a parable mean? A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. I want you to think about a parable. There's a lot of ways you can describe a parable, but I'm going to do it really easy for you today. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. A parable is a simple way. It's not a complex way. It's a story used to illustrate a moral or a spiritual lesson. A parable is a story that tells the truth that gets to the point across him into your life. You can understand it, you can see it, and you can begin to apply it inside of your life. A parable helps us to nourish the soil of our hearts. A parable makes you think. It makes you ponder. It makes you examine yourself. It puts yourself in the story, like what would I do, or what's going on inside of my life. And what a parable does, you guys, it begins to uh, touch the soil of our hearts so we can receive and understand the words of Jesus Christ. A parable many times is used to go right to the heart of a person's life. And it makes a person evaluate themselves. It makes a person begin to look at nobody else but only themselves. So I want to encourage you today as God's people, God wants us to examine ourselves and a self-examination is very needful in our lives and our generation. It is very important that we begin to look at ourselves. Where am I going? Where am I heading? What's taking place inside of my life today? Today. Parables are meant to awaken. They are meant to challenge. They're, they're meant to, to make you examine yourself, and they are an amazing thing. So I want to ask you a question. Can we examine ourselves this morning? Can we open up our hearts and say, God, where am I in the parable of the wheat and also of the tares? And it's this, you guys, that I want you to know. I, I like the way how Jesus points out the parables. When you read our text today, it says these words. Another parable he put forth unto them saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened. Now, Matthew is the only one that says the kingdom of heaven is likened. All the other gospels say the kingdom of, of God is likened. And I want you to think about the wording that Jesus uses because it's powerful and it's amazing. When he says the kingdom of heaven is likened, He's trying to give you and I a picture. Let me show you how the kingdom rolls. Let me show you how what heaven's about. Let me show you the heart of the kingdom of God. Let me show you what God is going to allow. Let me show you that when he says the kingdom of heaven is like it, it means let me show you what the kingdom of God is like. Let me tell you what the kingdom of heaven is all about and what you need to know inside your life. Let me make you understand the kingdom of heaven is like it. If you're not going to live for God and live like you're in the kingdom now, now, you're not going to make it one day to walk in the kingdom of God one day. And it's important that we grasp this today. It's important that as God's people, he's the kingdom of heaven is like it. You need to know the way of the kingdom. You have to live the way of the kingdom. Or guess what? You will never enter the kingdom of God at all. He's not saying this is it's the kingdom of heaven is like it this. He's not saying the kingdom of the world is like it. But the kingdom of heaven is like it unto the story. And throughout the parables, you begin to read... That Jesus is the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. And he's giving you and I an understanding what the kingdom of God is all about. 
And what Jesus is saying is we need to learn about the kingdom. We need to learn how the kingdom works or one day we will not be there at all. And it means it takes away the mindset that you can live and act and talk and walk wherever you want. And one day you're going to get to heaven and everything else is going to change. No, we're to call. We're called to live like citizens in heaven right now. We're called to be a people. The Bible says we're pilgrims passing by. We're called to be people that are living for God right now. So when God takes us home, there's no change at all. We're the same person here, man, that we're serving the Lord. We're giving God our all. Man, we're honoring God. We're doing this before we get to heaven. So one day we will be in the kingdom of God today. So let me give you some kingdom insight. That's what Jesus is talking about. Let me show you how heaven rules. And he's let me show you how the kingdom of God is like. And what it should do to all of our lives, it should stimulate us. It should say, man, this is what the kingdom of God is like. If this is what the kingdom of God is going to allow. If this is how the kingdom of God rules, then I better mind somebody. I better get up there. I better change my ways. I better look at my heart. I better examine myself. I better come to a point in my life to make sure my values, my beliefs, my morality, everything lines up with God. Now, I want you to realize the parable Jesus explains here, there's no middle ground. You're either a wheat or you are a tear. There's no middle ground at all. We have to understand what is a tear. An easy way to understand what a tear is, it is a weed. Is it, it is a weed or Israel knew it as a darnel. It injures the wheat. It grows within the wheat. It looks like wheat. It begins to look everything like wheat. It can fool you. But what begins to happen, this, as it begins to get older and it begins to mature and come into the season of harvest, that weed or that tear or that darnel begins to turn gray. And all of a sudden, it begins to see something that's different. The wheat grows taller than, than, than the tear. So this is what Jesus is talking about when you begin to understand. And it shows you and I a valuable picture for our lives. We see in our text, the servant said, listen, did you not sow good seed? And as they said, I did sow good seed. Then how is it there is terrors among it today? He says, an enemy has done this. And what it shows you and I, it shows you and I a picture from the very beginning. How God created this world. Everything was good. But we know the enemy came in. He sowed seed and bad seed. We read that in the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Sin came into the world. All of a sudden we got wings. We got thistles. We got all the madness that we see today. But what you begin to see today is it shows in the very beginning that the devil has, has literally planted seed among the world today. This is why we have false prophets, we have false teachings, we have false religions, we have all the madness around, and we think, man, where is God in this whole thing? Well, God is everywhere, but the enemy has sown seeds, and there are tares, and there are wheats in the kingdom of God. Now, I want you to think about what I'm saying. This parable that Jesus explains, it shows you and I, there is no middle ground. As we can see in our text today, the servant said, what's going on? Did you not sow good seed? He said, the enemy has done that. You see, we have to have, we have to see that tares, this darn old wheat, uh, the tares are poisonous for the wheat. It's very poisonous for the wheat. It must be picked out of the grain. But understand, this tare and wheat, they grow hand in hand. They grow together and they start to wind with one another. And this is what begins to happen. This is why before that, that tear and that wheat, before coming to the season to be harvested, the wheat will always go higher than a tear. And what they would do is they would begin to cut off the tops of it but leave the tears. But they could not just come there and begin to pull out the tears all of a sudden. They had to let them live together. So I want you to think about what I'm saying. In our country today, they don't even try to do that here in our country. They allow the wheat and the tear to grow together and to the harvest. And what begins to happen at the end of the harvest, they get the tares, they, they, they destroy them, they burn them, and they grab the wheat. But I want you to think about both of them must grow together to the time of harvest. We can see what Jesus is talking about today. We live in a world where we live with people that are not saved. We eat at the same places people are not saved. I mean, look at our world. The, 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 the rain rains on us, rains on the wicked. We, we enjoy the sun, they enjoy the sun. We eat at the same places. We drive cars like they drive. And God's trying to show us some understanding today is that the world we live in today, there is good and there is evil. There are the children of Satan and there are all the children of God. It's very, very important you understand this thing because Jesus is wanting God's people to examine themselves, to begin to look at themselves. What am I producing in my life? Am I a wheat? Am I a tear? Because the tear and the wheat look exactly the same, but they're not at all. It, they, it can fool you with 
through the eyes, but God looks at the motive of a person. God looks at the intent of a heart of a person, and it shows you and I something amazing. Now, a weed, I want you to understand, is valueless. This, this plant begins to grow wild. One thing about a weed is it, 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 it literally moves on cultivated ground and it injures the wheat. It injures the desired crop. It grows profusely, literally, uh, it, where it's not watered at all. Years ago, I remember telling my mom, my mom always loves green grass. And I remember my mom making this literally old schooler. Like we could have got a, a root killer, a, a, a rooter killer, but we, we didn't. She would make us go out with a shovel and literally a whole backyard, flip it, pick it, flip it up. But remember I got excited one day and I, I told mom, I'm gonna show you my backyard. Man, it is all green, it's pure green. And she looked at it and she said, yeah, it is all green, but it's all weeds, it's not grass. And I remember I got discouraged. I go, wait a minute, at least it's green. She goes, yeah, but it's all weeds. It's not grass at all. And I remember being excited about my grass being green, only to be told by my mom, that ain't grass, that's a bunch of weeds you got in your backyard. <laughs> and this parable today, it's amazing because it promises that God will make it right one day. This, this parable is amazing because you ever ask yourself, like, where's God at? Doesn't God see everything? And the parable promises you and I that one day that God will make it all right. One day God's going to separate the sheep from the goats. One day God is going to separate this whole thing. And if we see today that all the madness that Jesus is doing, that one day that God is going to cause it to stop. So it's, it's, this parable is amazing because it promises that God will make it all right one day. And the devil causes all the madness around us and plants all the evil seed and terrors among us. But in this parable, it's important that we know there's a day coming. There's a day of reckoning coming. There's a day of judgment coming. There's a day that Jesus Christ is going to come back. There's a day that God's going to separate the wheat from the tares, the goats from the sheep. There's a day coming that we're all going to, all, everything's going to come to an end. There's a day coming. You have to understand that day is near. That there's a day coming where one day the good father faith that we're we're fighting is going to come to an end. We're going to be in eternity with Jesus Christ. The rapture is going to take place, or God's going to come back. We'll understand one day it's all going to stop. And for some people, it's going to be waking up or being raptured to eternal life with Jesus, or it's going to be in hell and everlasting fire. And it's this today, you guys, I want you to think in this parable. Jesus shows us there's an end coming, and the result is heaven or hell. It shows they're the children of God, and also they're the children of Satan. Jesus tells us that we're either the wheat or we are the tear. And wheat and tares, they look exactly alike. They are very different. One produces and one doesn't, though. One begins to kill the wheat, and one begins to literally begins to produce life. It was not uncommon, if you understand the scripture, when Jesus was speaking his parable, the people understood what he was saying, because it was not uncommon if you had a, a beef with somebody, or you wanted to get even with somebody, or you didn't like somebody, that you would go in their field at night while, the, while, while, while your enemy slept and begin to plant tares and plant seeds there. And what it would do, it would injure their wheat, it would bankrupt who they are, and they would begin to ruin their lives. And Jesus explains the parable word for word because he tells the disciples, the disciples come to him, they ask him, Jesus, we want to know more about these tares. We, we've never heard this before, this parable. We want to know what's going on. And it's this today that Jesus explains his own parable. And he explains it to the T. He explains it to the T. But I want you to think about this. The disciples wanted to know more about these tares. Because something began to make their heart begin to say, God, there's either we or tares. We want to know more about these tares. Explain to us about the tares. And look what it says here in Matthew 13, verse 36 to 43. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares in the field. He answered and said to them, He that sowed the good seed is the Son of Man, which is Jesus. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels. They shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them that do iniquity and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There should be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now in verse 43, Jesus quotes Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the son of the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. And the parable shows you and I 
that Jesus explains the parable word for word. He tells him, listen, the son of God, which is me, I planted good seed. The, 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 the one that plants the seed, the, the plants the tares, is the devil. The tares are the children of the devil. The wheat are the children of God. The reapers are the angels. And the, re and the harvest at the end of the world. And begins to explain to them the parable word for word. And this parable shows us for now on, that shows, shows us that we live side by side with evil. We live side by side by people that are not saved. We live in a world today that not everybody's saved. They're either on the Lord's side or they're not on the Lord's side. They're either weak or they're either tear. There's no middle ground at all. And what we begin to see that it answers the question, why doesn't God do something about what's going on? It shows you and I that one day God is going to come back and make everything right. But the parable shows us a lot that you must live for God. That there's no excuse at all. But there's no excuse for doing anything else. There's no excuse to say, well, I didn't know this, I didn't know that. That we must live for God for the glory and the honor of God. And not only that, but it shows us that God would deal with, with the tares. God would not only deal with his people, but God would deal with the tares as well. And it shows you and I that as God's people, we are called to be the light and the salt of the earth. Now, it's this that I want, to, I want to bring out some truths in this parable that will help us today and ask ourselves, what are we? Are we a wheat or a tear? You got to remember what a parable does. It makes you examine yourself. It makes you look at yourself. And this is why the disciples that we're really concerned. We want to know what the tares are all about. And what it shows, I want to look at some truths today that will help us, you guys, because as God's people, we want to begin to look at this parable and ask ourselves, where are we in this whole thing? So I want to bring out some truths from this parable that not only help us, but make us ask ourselves, what am I today? Am I a wheat or am I a tear? In light of this parable, we need to examine ourselves. What are we today? Are we or are we a tear? Are we real or are we false? In 2 Corinthians 13, 5, that's the first part I want to look at today. This parable makes you examine yourself. And the Bible tells you and I, in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourselves whether, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be a reprobate. And the Bible tells you and I that it's good for us to examine ourselves. It's good for us to do an inventory of our lives. And that's what this parable is about. It's like, hey, take inventory. Look at your life. Where are you going? What's taking place in your life? Because when you look at this parable, it's powerful and amazing. But it shows you and I either we are a tear or whether we are a we today. And, it's, and, and I like what the Message Bible says in the same scripture. And it's not on PowerPoint. I want to read it to you. It says, test yourselves to make sure you are solid in the faith. Don't drift along taking everything for granted. Give yourselves regular checkups. You need firsthand evidence, not mere hearsay, that Jesus Christ is in you. In 1 Corinthians 11, 20, it reads, But let a man examine himself, so then eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Talking about communion. And I want you to think about it. We all should look at this parable and ask ourselves, where am I going? Where am I heading? What's taking place inside my life? Because the Bible tells you and I that this parable is that we're either one or the other day. This, uh, this parable also shows you and I that shows us a lot that not only is God watching the harvest, but we know angels are watching the harvest too. We know that God's looking at the harvest. God knows who's going to make it and who's not going to make it because God is sovereign. But it shows you and I that angels are watching the harvest as well. The angels are there. How I many we do believe in angels? We don't worship angels. We don't talk to angels to the point where we pray to them. We pray only to God. But we understand that angels are watching the harvest as well. In Matthew 24, verse 31, it reads, And he shall send, send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together as they left from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. And we understand the field is the world. And here, here, here God said, let them grow together. This is why we have all kinds of madness living among us one day, uh, uh, living among us. But one day, God is going to literally separate everybody. Today. One day, you're either going to be a wheat or a tear. And the Bible tells you and I that God will literally call his angels to gather the elect. Another thing you have to understand is that God has marked his people. But Satan has marked his people too. And when you read this saying, Ezekiel 9, 4, And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And I want you to think about it, because not only does God mark his people, and it says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, In whom you are also trusted, 
after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, whom also, after you believed, you were sealed without the Holy Spirit of promise. And the word sealed means to be marked. We understand in Revelation 13, 16, and 17, the Bible says that also that Satan's people will be marked. And he calls us all both, small and great, rich and poor, free and broad, to receive a mark in their hand or on their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, say he that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, and we know it's 666. And what I want you to think about, you guys, today, this parable gives us a lot of insight. It shows you and I that, man, God's people are marked. It shows you and I that God knows all of us today. It shows not only does God mark his people, but we know that but one day, and we even know now, that Satan's people are marked as well. We have to ask ourselves, which mark are we on today? Do we have the mark of the Lord? Do we have Jesus Christ in our life? Are we living for God and honoring God? Are we literally marked to be a terror? Are we marked by Satan? Because either way you look at it, this parable begins to make us examine ourselves. Where am I at in this whole parable? We also begin to understand there's a great separation one day. But God will judge one day the tares and the wheat and the sheep and the goats. In Matthew 25, verse 32 and 33, And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on their left hand. Now we have to understand there's a big difference. Sheep can live with goats. Sheep and goats usually begin to forge in the same field, but they are totally different. That they're totally different. They they hang out together. They're there. It gives you an eye picture of our world. Man, when we live among people, we, we're, we're there driving on the same highways, we go to the same schools, we even come to the same church. There's all kinds of things going on inside of our lives, but there is a major, major difference. You're either a we or you're a tear. And what God's trying to show us today, that one day there will be a great separation to separate the sheep from the goats. And you can look at a goat all kinds of ways. They're rebellious, they got horns, they fight, they push away, they eat anything, they don't care. But sheep need to be led. Sheep are led by God. Sheep are led by literally a, a pastor or a shepherd. We understand that Jesus is that great shepherd today. And Jesus is saying that you need to know which side you're on. Another one you have to understand, another truth that comes out from this parable, everyone either is going to go to heaven or go to hell. They're either going to be burned, gathered to be burned in hell, or be gathered to be put in the barn of God or the kingdom of heaven. And it's this that you read today. It says, And the Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. To understand the terrors, the kingdom of darkness, the children of the devil. They live their lives that offend God. This is why it's so important. We were talking about living the gospel last week. When you know the gospel, live the gospel, you want to honor God. When you understand the gospel, it's a narrow road. It's a turnstile. But the, the king, kingdom of darkness is built by crowds walking in on the brown road. But the kingdom of heaven is brought in one soul at a time. It's a personal choice with your life. It's a personal decision to serve God. It's not a group thing. It's not a whole church thing. It is a turnstile. Remember what a turnstile is? It's that thing at Disneyland. It's a thing on the subway. You've been on a subway. It's one person come at a time and it counts you as you begin to walk in. You can't have a bunch of people come in. You can't jump over the turnstile. you got to go through the town turnstile, come through it, and only one person at a time. But it's a choice that we have to make. And what you begin to see here that Jesus shows you and I what the terrors represent. He says, all things that offend and them which do iniquity. Those that are, are, that are, are not lawful. Those that are breaking the laws of God. Those are distorted. They are twisted. They do whatever they want to do. And it shows you and I that you're either going to be heaven or either going to be hell. You're either going to be burned to be gathered to be burned or be gathered to be put into the kingdom of God and the God's born. But it goes on like this. And so cast it in the furnace of fire. There should be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as a son in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. And it's this you got to understand where the disciples have made their ears perk up. Man, I want to know, like, what is going on in my life? What is this all about today? And I want to encourage the saints of God today that God has called us to live for God, to glorify God, to honor God. We are called to be the wheat of God in this world. And it's important for us to understand these things. See, this parable goes with the parable of the dragon also. These two parables go together and it shows you and I the same thing 
as the wheat who tears in Matthew 13, 47 and 50. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a net that was cast in the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and, and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And it's this today, you guys, we have to ask ourselves, what are we today? Am I being a tear or am I being wheat? Because a tear is useless. A tear destroys the wheat. And one day we understand that God is going to bring everything into an account. And this is why every parable you begin to read, Jesus in the kingdom of heaven is likened to this, likened to the story. And what it shows you and I, it shows you and I what the kingdom of God stands for. It shows you and I, it gives you and I a picture that is my life offending God by the way I live, by the way I talk, by my actions, by my character, by my integrity. Am I literally living in iniquity? Am I living in ways that are distorted? Am I living in ways that breaks the laws of God inside of my life? And it's this today that you understand. It shows us why it's so important to witness. It shows us why it's so important to evangelize our world. It shows you and I that the scripture brings so much truth inside of our lives. I thought about the scripture in Jeremiah 8, 20. It reads, the harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. And think about it. Because one day the harvest is going to end. One day the season is going to end. It could be today, it could be tomorrow, it could be next year, it could be two years, it could be any time. But you know what it does when you read a parable like this? It, because a parable is a story that literally a story that you can understand, a story that you realize in your own world, but brings a spiritual insight and shows what the kingdom of God is like. And if you get anything today, you begin to understand that it matters how you live, how you talk, and how you walk. It matters today if you're being the salt and the light of the world. It matters today because let me tell you something. One day God will separate the wheat from the tares. And it might look like everybody's good today. But what it also shows you and I is that God worry about that. What it also shows you and I to concentrate on yourself. What it shows you and I today is listen. I need to take a personal inventory in my life. I need to take a self-examination in my life. God's going to deal with everybody else. But he needs to deal with me first and nobody else. And what it shows you now that God has everything under control. What it shows you now that, listen, that justice and rights will one day reign all throughout the earth. But until then, we live among Satan's children. We live among God's children. But you're called to stand up and be the light and the salt of the world today. The sad thing today, you guys, is the scripture to come alive in so many people's lives. Because one day, the harvest is going to pass. The summer is going to be ended. And we don't want to say, and we are not saved. Can I tell you today that God wants to save you? Can I tell you today the day is coming? Can I tell you today the judgment of God is going to come upon this earth? But at the same time, the glory of God is going to come down. God will gather his people. God will grab, gather the saints of God. And one day we will be in the presence of our God. So it's what we need to be is the week today. We must speak to the tares. We must let tares know that Jesus loves them. We must let tares know that God wants to save them. You know what it shows us also? Is let God worry about the tares and not you. You know what gives us so much trouble? You guys, you worry about the tares. Why this? Why that? How come this? How come that? God's like, hey, don't worry about it. I'm dealing with it later on. Let me deal with this. You worry about yourself. Stop your gossiping. Let me help you. Let me guide you. Let me to Don't worry. I will deal with this whole thing in my life. What it shows you and I, guys, today is that I want you to take this as self inventory. What are we today? Are we weak or are we tear? We have a choice, you guys. Even if you're a tear, you have a choice. Now, let me say, in the physical sense, the tears don't have no choice. They're going to get plucked out and they're going to die. But in the spiritual sense today, you have a choice if you're a tear to submit under the things of God. Yeah. And to allow God to make you into some wheat. Yes. To allow God to touch your life. Yes. But you have to realize that what are we there? We have tear or are we weak? We have a choice today. And this parable shows the beginning of what Satan did. It shows how he destroyed the world when God made a good world. But God said, let them live together. At least you fall out, the tares and the wheat come with them. Don't worry about it. One day, I will separate this whole thing. Don't, don't worry, you let me worry about that. But this parable is an amazing parable. 
Because it shows you and I there is no middle ground this morning. And it shows you and I today that if you are a terror, you can come to God. I can say today that my name is Timmy Javera and I used to be a terror. I was once a child of Satan, but no more. And I tell you the same thing for all of us today, to you that are born again and saved. But a parable makes you ponder and make you have self-examination. Where am I going? The kingdom of heaven is likened, or the kingdom of God is like. This is how the kingdom rolls. You know what it shows you today is I better mind the parables of Jesus because it shows a story, but spiritual insights. And that I, when I read this day, I, I, I was thinking about God, why do you only say the kingdom of heaven is likened? Because that's how the kingdom rolls. But you know what it also shows us? If you ain't living like you're in the kingdom now, guess what? You won't make it in the kingdom. Something magical is not going to happen. You live like a devil down here, all of a sudden you're just like, kingdom of heaven! You're going to change. It's <laughs> not going to happen that way. Yeah. You need to live it now. Yeah. You need to understand it now. No wonder why the terrorists instead of Wonder Woman is, is kingdom of heaven. Right? Uh, so, uh, it's kingdom of heaven. Some of you thought that, some of you did. But what I want you to, ask, want you to understand and realize is where are we at today? You know what the love of God is? That Jesus wants us to make it to heaven. That's why he spoke in parables. Yeah. So you can sit there and understand a true story. They realized what was going on. They, they knew, like, man, I know what's going on. He said, just like you guys left them, because by nature, you guys, we're the people like, let's, let's take them out and gather them and burn them. Do you want us? Look at the parable. It says, they asked them, do you want us to take these things out and burn them? That's how people are. You know how many God's people want to always punish people all the time? Yeah. If some God's people were pastors, they would cut off everybody's head. They go, do you want us to go burn them all, gather them up? He said, no, 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 let them be. He said, my father would do that. My father one day gathered angels and they will separate the sheep from the goats. Doesn't mean we don't stand for righteousness. It's not saying the kingdom, the, the terrors of the kingdom of darkness is, is in the children of the devil. And do you have them sometimes in church? Yes. And inside this church, there are people that are serving God and people that are not serving God. Inside this church, just like in the world, there are people that literally that are children of the devil and they are children of God. The thing about here today is that Jesus loved us so much. He says, listen, I want to give you some spiritual insight. I want you to make it to the kingdom of God. I want you to understand the heart of the kingdom because I want you to live for the kingdom so that one day you can be in the kingdom. Today we have to ask ourselves, are we wheat or are we tear? And if you are tear, God can help you to become wheat. If you are wheat, understand you are called to bring life. You are called to sound the alarm. You are called to minister the gospel. You are called to live a life that does not offend God or walk in iniquity or walk breaking the laws of God. You're there to show forth, I'm a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. I'm an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Let me show you how heaven citizens roll. Let me show you how they talk, live, act, walk. Let me show you the goodness of our God. So when people look at you, you are different. You act like an alien in this country. I am an alien. I'm from another country, another world, and it's called the kingdom of heaven. Can I get you to say, let's give God thanks. Let's give God praise. And glory, Father, we thank you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. You know, as every head is bowed today in reverence to the Lord, it's a question that we need to ask ourselves. What am I today? Because we're either on the Lord's side or we're not. We're either a wheat or a tear. The thing that I would never want to happen to any of God's people is the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Church, this parable is the only parable found in the Gospels, and it's only found in Matthew. But it's a parable that goes with the parable of the dragnet. And it's a parable that literally begins to show you what's happening even now, what's happened in the past, and what's going to happen in the future. And that parable makes you look at yourself and say, where am I at in this whole thing? One is gathered to be burned and go to the kingdom of darkness and hell. What is gathered to go into God's barn to be used for God's glory. And as every head is found there, Christians are praying songs for souls. Maybe you're here, you're not saved, and you don't know God. The most important decision you ever make in your life is a decision about your soul. And if you haven't given your life to God, I want to encourage you today that God has made a way. We all come in terrorists. We all come in literally children of Satan. 
But God begins to come into our life, and God adopts us, and we become children of the living God. God becomes our Father. And if that's you today, you say, man, I want Jesus. I, I know one day God's going to bring everything to an account. It shows us why today there's a world that's gone crazy. But sometimes our prayer is like, man, God, when are you going to stop all this? God promises that he will. But thank God that he hasn't yet. Because there are many, many people that are not saved. Thank God that he hasn't came yet. Because maybe our moms and our dads would not know the Lord. Maybe if God came out today, would we even make it? And this parable is to literally look at our lives and to examine ourselves. To see where we're at today in God. And like how the disciples ask, we want to know. And Jesus explains this parable to the detail of what it is and what it means. I tell you today that God wants you on his side. Can I tell you today, it doesn't matter if you're a terror, it doesn't matter what you've done. We serve a God that can heal you and touch you, a God that can forgive you, a God that can bring transformation inside your life. And if that's you, when you lift your hand, don't walk out of this place not serving God or not knowing Jesus. Anybody in this place want to give your life to God? Say, I'm not here, I'm not saved, I don't know God, I don't know the Lord. Maybe you're backsliding, maybe you're online, you're saying, I'm backsliding, I walk away from the Lord. Whatever reason it is, I want to tell you that he loves you today. This parable is to tell a story that brings spiritual insight. And I think we can understand this in our generation today so much. Anybody here today, you're backsliding, maybe you don't know the Lord, maybe you're online, you want to see Christ in your heart, if that's you, will you lift your hand? God loves you today, God sees you today. Churches, we all stand today just in the presence of God. You that are online, I want to say it just a prayer. We always want to do this because we don't know who's watching online, who may be saved, who might not be saved. But today, I just want to bow our heads, and if you want to give your life to the Lord, I just want you to just repeat this prayer to me. We're not going to say it to me, we're going to say it to God. You see, Jesus Christ has sown good seed. And that good seed is still being sown throughout the entire world. But any time there is good seed that is sown, the devil has his people go out there and sow demonic seeds, seeds of doubt, seeds that produce terrors, seeds that begin to choke even the wheat and begin to destroy and injure sometimes many of God's people. Jesus is showing you and I how it works, how, how this thing is and what's taking place in our lives. And if that's you today and you want Christ, I just want you to bow your ears. We're going to say a prayer to God. Say, Father, I come before you right now in the name of Jesus. I know that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior in my life. I know, Jesus, you died for me on the cross and you rose the third day. And I want to thank you, God, for being my Savior. And right now, Jesus... I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I repent of all my sins. And I ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord, to be my Savior, and to lead me all the days of my life. I thank you, God. And I believe that I'm saved. With my mouth I have confessed. And with my heart I have believed. Your word says all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. How many know we serve an amazing God?